Balancing Empathy and Self, The Power of Saying No Welcome to another enlightening episode of Information for Life, Insights and Ideas to Navigate Your World. I'm your host, Daniel Boyd, and today we're embarking on a journey, a deep dive into the notion of personal boundaries and the high price that often accompanies an overly yielding nature. Let's paint a picture. Imagine a person, malleable and soft, with a heart as wide as the ocean. A person who finds it tough to utter the word no. A person who, owing to their empathetic nature, becomes a net of refuge for others. But what happens when the same ocean of empathy starts to flood the shores of their own life, wreaking havoc? It's not easy, and it's often not appreciated to be the type of person who consistently puts others' needs before your own. The world has an uncanny knack for taking the soft, the kind, the empathetic, and attempting to mold them into shapes that fit their own puzzle, often without consideration for the personal cost involved. You see, there's an art to saying no, a certain finesse in asserting personal boundaries. It's a dance, a delicate balance between maintaining your own mental health and well-being, while also providing support and empathy to those around you. This art is often a struggle for those with an empathetic nature. Now don't get me wrong, empathy, kindness, and a willingness to help others are beautiful traits. They are the threads that weave the fabric of our shared humanity. But there's a line, a delicate line, between selflessness and self-neglect, between being supportive and being a doormat. There's a difference between a door and a doormat. A door has a knob, a lock, it can be opened and closed. It welcomes guests but also maintains boundaries. A doormat, on the other hand, is there to be stepped on. There's a lesson to be learned here. We need to strive to be doors, not doormats. It's not a sign of strength to exhaust yourself for others to the point of having nothing left for yourself. Being able to help others requires being able to help yourself first. You can't pour from an empty cup, after all. In an airplane emergency, they always tell you to put on your own oxygen mask before assisting others. Why? Because if you run out of oxygen, you can't help anyone else with their oxygen mask. Life is a lot like that. We need to take care of ourselves before we can truly take care of others. So what's the solution? How do we navigate this labyrinth of empathy, self-sacrifice, and personal boundaries? Firstly, we need to understand that it's okay to say no. Saying no doesn't mean you're a bad person. It doesn't mean you're selfish. It just means you're aware of your own boundaries and limits. Remember, a no spoken from your deepest conviction is better and greater than a yes merely uttered to please or worse, to avoid trouble. Another key aspect to consider is self-awareness. You need to understand your own needs, your own feelings. Take time to reflect on your actions. Why are you unable to say no? Is it out of genuine concern, or is it because you're afraid of rejection, of being perceived as unkind? It's vital to remember that you have a right to your own feelings, your own space, and your own time. You are not obligated to make everyone else happy at the expense of your own happiness. The sun does not apologize for setting each night, for it knows it needs to rest to rise again. Similarly, you should not feel guilty for taking time for yourself. Let's pause for a moment and think about empathy. Empathy is a powerful tool. It allows us to connect, to understand, to support. But it should not be a one-way street. Empathy should be reciprocal. You should not be the only one extending understanding and compassion. Being kind and empathetic does not equate to accepting poor treatment or allowing your boundaries to be crossed. You are not a tree rooted in place, forced to weather every storm that comes your way. You are a person, a person with feelings, with limits, and with the right to protect your own well-being. Consider this. When we are able to assert our boundaries effectively, we are not only taking care of ourselves but also teaching others how to treat us. In this way, our relationships can become more balanced, more respectful, and ultimately, more fulfilling. In the grand tapestry of life, we are all threads intertwined. We influence and are influenced by each other. By learning to assert our boundaries, we are not only protecting our own thread, but also contributing to the overall strength and beauty of the tapestry. I'm not suggesting this will be an easy journey. It will take courage. It will take strength. It will take resilience. But remember, you're not alone. There are resources available, professionals who can guide you, and a community of individuals who are walking the same path. Books, for instance, can be a great source of wisdom. The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker provides valuable insights into trusting one's instincts and setting boundaries. The Assertiveness Workbook by Randy J. Patterson provides practical techniques for developing assertiveness and self-esteem. There are also numerous online resources and communities dedicated to personal growth and self-improvement. Websites such as Psychology Today and Mayo Clinic 
have comprehensive articles on setting boundaries and assertiveness. Online platforms like Reddit and Quora have communities where people share their experiences and advice. Furthermore, never hesitate to seek professional help if needed. Therapists and counselors are trained to help you navigate your feelings and develop strategies to assert your boundaries. The path towards finding balance in empathy and self-preservation may be arduous, but it's a journey worth undertaking. It's a journey towards self-respect, towards stronger relationships, and towards a healthier, happier you. In the midst of all this, it's important to remember not to descend to the level of those who seem to relish in their abrasive attitudes and selfish actions. You may have encountered people like this, who appear to be strong, who command attention, who are unyielding. But if you look closer, you'll see a stark lack of empathy, a fundamental misunderstanding of the needs and feelings of others. Indeed, it may be tempting to mimic these behaviors in an effort to assert boundaries, but it's crucial to realize that strength is not synonymous with rudeness or insensitivity. The allure of this kind of faux strength is a mirage, a hollow shell that often conceals a core of isolation and conflict. Your empathy, your ability to connect with people on a deep, meaningful level, is a far greater asset than any show of force or self-centeredness. Empathy is a silent strength, a superpower even. It's the adhesive that binds society, fostering relationships built on mutual respect and trust. When you can understand, feel, and respond to the emotions of others, you are not just forging connections. You're learning, growing, and evolving. You're taking in diverse perspectives, making better informed decisions, and building a foundation for leadership that is rooted in understanding and unity. Empathy, your empathy, makes you a better friend, a better leader, a better member of society. It's a testament to your strength, resilience, and humanity. The naysayers, the abrasive ones, may appear strong, but their path leads to division and isolation. They lose out on the rich tapestry of human connection, the learning and growth that comes from understanding others. They're confined within the walls of their own perspectives, their own self-interests. True strength, your strength, lies in your ability to empathize, to understand, and to unite. It's your capacity to balance self-care with care for others, to assert your boundaries without trampling those of others. It's your ability to say no without becoming unkind or disrespectful. As we navigate the labyrinth of empathy and personal boundaries, let's remember not to lose ourselves in the process. Let's remember to maintain our empathy, our respect for others, and our fundamental kindness, even as we learn to assert ourselves and protect our well-being. Remember, you are not just strong, you're empathetically strong. You're not just a person, you're a person of understanding, of kindness, of empathy. And that, my friends, is true strength. Recommendations for further reading are as follows. The Gift of Fear by Gavin De Becker. This book provides valuable insights into understanding and trusting one's instincts when it comes to personal safety and setting boundaries. The Assertiveness Workbook by Randy J. Patterson, a resourceful book providing practical techniques for developing assertiveness and self-esteem. Psychology Today. This online resource has numerous articles on a variety of topics related to psychology, including setting personal boundaries and assertiveness. Mayo Clinic, another online resource that provides articles on a wide range of topics including mental health and well-being, https slash www.mayoclinic.org slash. Online platforms like Reddit and Quora. These platforms have communities where people share their personal experiences and advice on a wide range of topics, including setting personal boundaries and dealing with empathetic overload. Remember that while these sources can provide useful information, they should be used for general guidance and not as a substitute for professional advice. It's always recommended to seek help from a qualified professional if you're struggling with issues related to mental health and well-being. As we wrap up today's episode, remember this. It's okay to be soft, to be empathetic. It's okay to care for others. But it's also okay to care for yourself. It's okay to say no. You are not a doormat. You are a door. You have the right to open and close, to welcome and to protect. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Information for Life insights and ideas to navigate your world. We look forward to bringing you more thought-provoking topics in our next episode. Until then, remember, you have the power to shape your world. Choose wisely and embrace the journey.